Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Miller Guide, and today I want to talk about something really important to me and to many of my clients who come to see me. And, and oftentimes they'll, they'll go, Margaret, you know, that exercise program you gave me was great, but it's really bothering my shoulder. And other times people will come to see me specifically because they have pain between the shoulder blades or it feels like it's coming from under the shoulder blade. So that's what today's blog is all about. It's all about shoulder pain, avoiding shoulder pain, thinking about possible causes of shoulder pain. And so let's go through what are some of those common causes that most of us don't even think about. So one of the first ones is waking up in the morning. If you notice that you have shoulder pain when you first wake up in the morning, it might be either how you spent your last few hours before going to bed, your position when you're lying in bed, the, um, the positioning of your shoulders vis-a-vis -vis your pillows. Um, the other thing to think about is how you actually sleep. Is your shoulder tucked underneath you? Is your arm tucked underneath your head? All these things that can be very compressive on the shoulder joint itself. So listen to your body. If you're feeling that pain first thing in the morning, think about sleeping position. Think about, you know, what are you doing in those last few hours of the day? You're coming to see a therapist, and as therapists, we can only do so much because we're trying to undo, you know, um, what you do all day long. So what is it that you're doing all day long? You know, what is it in terms of your postural stresses? How do you spend your day? Are you spending your day, you know, at a computer without the elbow support, without the, the proper um, ergonomic alignment? You know, are you being brought into these positions that put your shoulder at a mechanical disadvantage? So that's something, you know, whether it's a computer, whether it's how you spend hours knitting, how you spend hours reading, those kind of things are all really significant insofar as your shoulder and the postural stresses that that places on the shoulder joint itself. Are you just recovering from an injury or an insult to your shoulder where you might have had a cast on, you might have been wearing a sling, or even sometimes when we're having shoulder pain, we also have arm pain and we start wearing braces on our arms. Well, all of this starts to change how we move and how we hold ourselves and can set up tender spots in our muscles or trigger points in our muscles and so that's certainly something to be aware of. The fourth point in regards to consideration for your shoulders is how are you built? Some of us, um, you know, we all have different length arms, different length legs. Well, some of us structurally have short upper arms. And that's a big disadvantage when in the world they're creating, you know, chairs and um, armrests in cars to accommodate so the average person. And so if you don't fit, like I don't fit into an average height, um, if your upper arm doesn't fit into an average length, then those armrests are just a little bit too low for you all the time. So you're going to have to accommodate that. You're going to have to, you know, have little pieces of foam that you can strap on to, um, you know, your work chair or that you, you know, set your um, car seat such that a lot of the armrests are too far that you, I have a lot of my clients just um, take like a, a sleeping bag or create a sleeping bag type effect bunched up so they can have a nice armrest for, um, as an opportunity to relax their shoulders on long drives. And so that's that fourth point, that structural um, alignment or, or the misalignment that is created by the, the ergonomics in our society. Um, a fifth point for uh, things that can create pain in the shoulders would be a sedentary lifestyle. So muscles love to move, and especially a joint like the shoulder, it's such a fabulous joint in that it allows us so many ranges of motion. We have this external rotation, internal rotation, flexion, extension, abduction, you know, horizontal adduction, all this wonderful motion. But as, you know, we go through our day-to-day -day life, we get, you know, set into a very patterned motion. And so many times I'll ask people, 
when's the last time you, you raised your arms up overhead? And they don't remember, other than you know, if they've reached up for something or they've put something on that required a lot of reaching. So that making sure that you bring those shoulders in through the full range of motion that, that you know, the anatomy provides, which is so wonderful, including the motion of the shoulder blades, which involve not just coming forward and back, but going up and down. And so there's this wonderful whole avenue of, of motion that comes from the shoulder girdle, as we called it, or the scapula. And so um, making sure that when you do move the arm that the shoulder girdle moves with it, the scapula moves with it. A sixth point to think about when trying to assess what is it that's causing your shoulder pain and to help us as clinicians figure out what's helping or what's hurting you is what is it that you're using on or around the muscles of the shoulders? And when I say this, I think about um, my sisters who are all large breasted and they have to wear bras that are, are just so tight and, and have such straps that just sink into their um, their upper trapezius. So for some people it's bras, for other people they decide to wear backpacks, but their backpacks might not have that little um, tie piece that takes some of the weight off of the, the shoulders or the waist piece that helps to take the weight off the shoulders. And those things that can restrict blood flow to the muscles can be very um, subtle but cause eventual pain through the creation of trigger points. For um, men who do have to dress up at work, ties and having ties that are tight around the scalene muscles and the sternocleidomastoid muscles in the neck can also create trigger points that can be, the pain from these trigger points can go as far back as the lower shoulder blades and that space between the spine and the shoulder blade. So thinking beyond just, what did I do with my shoulder last week? You know, I didn't seem to do anything odd, but it's just those compounding um, effects of day-to-day -day life and, and the, the forces that happen to be on the shoulder. Um, another one to think about is purses. And I have so many women that come with really heavy purses. And they're like, I hardly have anything in the purse, but somehow that purse ends up being four and five pounds and they're always you know, carrying it over the shoulder, same shoulder, and even as they do a cross pattern, it's still a lot of weight borne through the shoulder and, and again, constricting the blood flow to the muscles and altering your postural alignment. And then the seventh thing, we talked about, you know, the, and this is the other extreme from sedentary lifestyle, when you don't, you know, so sometimes we don't move enough and sometimes we move too much, but in the same pattern all the time. So a habitual exercise pattern of movement, we often, and a lot of my clients will, will gravitate towards the things that they're good at and the things that are easier to do. And so, you know, if you tend to be forward, and I used to, um, in my past life, have a golf fitness practice. And so, you know, golfers would set up where they've been hanging out all day. And so they were, you know, sitting behind their computers with rounded folder sh shoulder forward, and they'd go to their posture at a dress in the same alignment because it felt comfortable. And that's where their body habitually had been hanging out, as opposed to opening things up and realigning so that they get a better swing. But in terms of the shoulders and the health of the shoulders and shoulder pain, so significant because you're just compounding this forwardness. So all of this forwardness, you know, you're kind of going, okay, Margaret, all these causes, but you know, these are causes, but I have pain. So how do all these causes lead to pain? Well, they lead to pain because certain muscles get short and tight, other muscles get long and weak. And so we have to address you know, not just the short and tight muscles and the long and weak muscles, but how you got there in the first place, or else if we just address those muscles and those weaknesses, we're not going to help you get 
you know, get rid of the cause of the pain, the, the ultimate, you know, uh, deep cause of the pain. And so if you are starting an exercise program, the last thing I want you to do is give it up because of shoulder pain, but rather, you know, I hope this blog helps you to kind of go, okay, you know, when I do that, that push-up, you know, or when I do that row, am I, am I doing that row and really, you know, bringing my shoulder blades or am I keeping them forward the way they're hanging out all the time, all day? Maybe I need to change how I'm sitting at my desk for those, you know, during the many hours of the day so that when I go into the gym, I'm not taking that posture in with me. Go through the muscles, you know, and, and feel the muscles through your shoulders and kind of go, do I have any tender spots? And taking tools um, such as a theracane, taking just simple tools like a tennis ball or a yoga therapy ball or a, a little, um, I use, I love little street hockey balls and getting those balls in up against the wall between your shoulder blades and your spine, um, on the shoulder blade itself, below the shoulder blade, so that you can start exploring and going, oh wow, I didn't realize um, you know, how tender this is. And the beautiful thing, you know, we usually will only get one shoulder bothering us at a time. So you have your good side as your comparison and go, wonder how that muscle feels on the other side. And you go feel, see how it feels on the other side. And you're like, well, that feels really good. Well, that's what you should expect of both sides. And so you're going to want to work through um, doing some self massage. And I love, love, love this book, the Trigger Point Therapy Workbook. I use it all the time as a reference for my clients. I suggest that clients purchase it so that they can you, they have a great, you know, section at the beginning of, of the shoulder section, for instance, that has where pain is referred to. So even as therapists, we kind of sometimes go, we forget, you know, that the scalene muscles and neck can be that source for that, you know, that nagging pain down here, as well as other pain sources uh, or sites. And so by exploring all the places that can cause the arm pain that can be coming from your infraspinatus, you know, or the, the deep, you know, under the shoulder blade pain that can come from serratus posterior superior, and you have to get at it by moving the arm across. Well, all of those little details are covered in this book with, with great diagrams and great descriptions on how to do that. And, and so I encourage you to use that as, as a first tool if you don't have access to a good massage therapist or a good physiotherapist. And, um, and know that you know, if your pain doesn't start to change dramatically within you know, a week or two weeks of doing some self-care on your shoulders, please seek the advice of a healthcare professional, of your doctor, because there are many other causes for shoulder pain that can be referred from your organs, from a potential a fracture if you have osteoporosis. You know, there, there, are, there are more um, dangerous um, reasons for having shoulder pain. So, however, having said that, most of the shoulder pain that I see is simply from people not being aware of the causes of the shoulder pain, how to look after their shoulders, and how to to keep their muscles happy, happy, <laughs> happy and happy. So um, with that, I, you know, going to sign off for today. Thank you for tuning in, and I wish you many, many years of happy, flexible, mobile shoulders.